The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. Today's Mass is being celebrated for the 60th anniversary of this parish church. While the parish of St. Alphonsus Liguri is a 70-year-old parish, we've only been worshiping in this physical sanctuary for 60 years, and that's today. It was opened today, 60 years ago. So congratulations to all of you who call this place your home. We will soon be able to worship in it again. This Mass is being offered for all of you as we celebrate our anniversary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the Mount of God, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain by the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice that said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram, and you shall also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. The word of the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Here's your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. 
I long to see your face, O Lord. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Shine on the world like bright stars. You are offering it the word of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, these are very comforting words from Jesus today, aren't they? If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. What? Literally? Is Jesus literally asking us to, to poke our eyes out and cut our hands off? Of course not. It is a figure of speech. But he is using very physical and aggressive language to hit the message home. If there are things in your life that are a stumbling block from you getting into heaven, then get them out of your life. Whatever it might be that is going to cause you to sin, turn away from it. Because it is better for you to enter heaven with a couple of bumps and bruises than it is for you to get thrown into hell. Strong language. But let's try to work our best at getting rid of some of those things in our lives that get in the way of us achieving holiness. Now, I don't know what that is for you in your own personal life. But all of us have struggles. We're all weak. We're all human. Skin and bone, right? All of us. We all have our own struggles and our own particular things that, that cause us to sin. We're being challenged to turn away from that. We are being challenged, as we heard in the acclamation today, to shine in the world like a bright star. Because we're offering to the world the word of life. We're meant to shine like a star. Unfortunately, sin and all of that kind of stuff dims that light a little bit. And we're called to be children of light. We heard that a couple of days ago in the gospel, right? You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth a couple of days ago. Well, the light can't shine if it's dim. Sin dims our light. We're being challenged to, to put those things away. So what do I mean by that practically? What does that practically mean for you and, and anyone else watching this at home today? What does that mean? Well, if the computer is difficult for you, and you're tempted to do a couple extra clicks that you shouldn't do, or go to sites that are no good for you, or for your marriage, then get away from the computer. Or get some software to help you stay pure. 
Do whatever it takes to help yourself stay clean. If you got a pouty mouth because you hang around with people who are always cussing and cursing, you might not want to hang around with them that much because they are influencing your speech. And let's face it, we are products of who we surround ourselves with, right? Negative energy breeds more negative energy. Positive energy can breed positive energy. So if that's an issue for you, well, consider who your friends are. Because really, if your friends are real friends, they want you to get into heaven too. And if they're a stumbling block, then maybe they're not really your friends, or you should evaluate that friendship. I could go on and on. But whatever it is in your life that gets in the way of you being the child of God that God wants you to be, then you need to get away from that. Without physically poking out an eye and physically cutting off a hand, you need to get away from it. Or away, yeah, away from it. So get the software you might need to help you. Put some limitations on your phone. Watch who you hang around with. Watch how you speak. All of these things can help us be the light that we're called to be, the children of God that we're called to be. And we can't do this on our own. We need help. So don't be afraid to ask God today for help to do just that. Lord, help me. Help me to do this difficult thing that I might like doing or that might bring me comfort or temporary joy or might help me to fit in, Lord, help me get rid of that. Lord, help me take out the trash. Because I want to be your child. And I want to see you in heaven. And I'd rather get to heaven a little bit bumped up and bruised up than not get there at all. May God bless you all. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Alphonsus Liguri, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Ecce agnus Dei, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God in him.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the wicked enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.